Hi everyone, I'm glad to be here today and thanks for joining. Um, I'm Marlin, I'm going to lead the, the discussion today and um, yeah, I head up the marketing services department at Music Ally. So for those of you, I think probably most of you should know what we do by now, but just if anyone hasn't joined yesterday, um, we are a digital publication who writes about, that write about um, digital trends and digital marketing in the music industry. And um, we also do training um, in all sorts of digital marketing related topics and marketing services with um, managements and artists and labels where we help them with digital strategy overall, just as a quick intro. Um, but I don't wanna talk for too long about myself. So I would like to say uh, hello to Laura and Juan, my two um, panelists, if I wanna say so today. And um, yeah, I would say maybe let's start with a quick introduction um, of Laura and Juan and just let us know who you are, um, what you're doing in the music industry and, and your experience as well. Uh, thank you, Marlene. So my name is Laura Mendoza. I am currently the head of sales distribution for uh, South and Central America in Believe Distribution Services, uh, the French company. Uh, I've been in the music industry for 25 years already, <laughs> so I, I've been quite a while along uh, the Colombian industry. I started my work in EMI Music until the very end in 2013. Then I worked with Alta Ponte. I started with uh, all this distribution uh, <laughs> environment. And then a year and a half ago, in the middle of, of the pandemic, I started with Believe to manage the region. And well, we're growing and we are doing a lot of things to make Colombia sound a lot in other countries and throughout the world. Thank you. Juan. Hey, y'all. Um, I'm Juan. Um, I'm in Medellin right now. I'm a musician. I actually went to music school, did the whole thing with the little dots and the sticks and stuff like that. I also worked at the produced and recorded music mixed and also played as a musician with a local rock band called La Derecha which is like the right um, then I got the chance to go to the United States and study a little bit about arts management and when I came back I got an offer from City Baby to represent them here in Colombia so I currently it's been four years already and I manage uh, or I represent CD Baby for Colombia, Ecuador, and Dominican Republic. Um, so yeah, that's my job. We currently have an office here in Colombia. Uh, we are about nine people. I, I, uh, I'm the director of the office. So basically helping independent artists get their music out, figuring out strategies, helping them get to know our tools. That's basically the deal right now. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so I think what I would like to start with is just getting some of your insights on how your sorry can everyone mute themselves yeah um, on how your market um, you know compares to um, the Nordic region and the the European region. So um, for example, in the Nordics, you know Spotify is obviously like comes from from Sweden. Um, there's a high premium streaming penetration. How does that compare to your market and how fans are consuming um, music in Colombia? Is, is Spotify the leader? Um, can you tell us a bit about that? Okay, so um, Colombia is a region that, you know, people don't have that much of an acquisition power. People do not have uh, credit cards in a massive way as in other territories around the world, as in Europe, for example. So most of the music listening that you can see in Colombia comes from actually YouTube, but and not the YouTube music app, for example, but actually the YouTube uh, video playlist, for example, people uh, have a restaurant or a beauty salon and they just put on a playlist on YouTube and that's the music that people listen to during their day. So YouTube is a very, very, very much uh, with a huge penetration in Colombia. However, of course, we do have the presence of DSPs and of course, Spotify has the lead right now, even though it wasn't like that all the time uh, when 
the first digital services started in Colombia. We started with iTunes. Then Deezer came very strong because they um, they made like an alliance with a telco company with Millicom. Uh, for those uh, in Europe, Millicom is Stigo in Colombia. So uh, they started to have a lot of users and sus subscribers. Uh, but then Spotify came along and they stole a whole bunch of the market that Deezer had. And we had a very nice competition, kind of a 50-50 uh, going on there. But now Spotify could, we could say it's the leader, Juan, of, uh, of the DSPs in Colombia. Even though we have another uh, participant, let's say, that um, is very strong because of the size of the telco company, which is Claro Musica, that is part of Carlos Slim's uh, conglomerate, Claro, around the Americas. So this is a very interesting competitor. However, the penetration is not that strong as in Spotify or Deezer. And right now we are uh, very happy and very eager to know what's gonna happen with Amazon Music that is starting uh, in, the, in the region in Colombia as one of the big competitors as well. Juan, I don't know if you agree with me, you have. <laughs> No, I do. I do. I agree with you. Uh, I, I would just add that, for example, Apple Music is not as relevant here as it is, for example, in the States or in Europe. And uh, yeah, consumption is, is mostly on YouTube. We don't have, I mean, Latin America in general and Colombia is growing a lot of on, on, on catching or trying to catch up in connectivity because we don't have that much uh, internet penetration throughout the country. So as far as we catch up in that trend, we uh, get a lot of numbers in, in consumption and in growth in the platforms. Uh, perhaps you've seen it, but Latin America is the fastest growing region for a lot of DSPs, including, including Spotify. So it, it's us like catching up, bringing signal to remote places, uh, more people getting smartphones so it's 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 a growing region and we also but it's not only about connectivity we also grow in terms of uh new music consumption latin american markets tend to consume more new music according to spotify's numbers so that's a good thing you know for you guys trying to open up a new market to go to new countries to pay for advertising or marketing in latin america with where perhaps could be cheaper for you it's it's good news to know that we are open to listening to more rhythms and to to new music and i would agree yeah youtube is is basically a king everyone's on youtube and people also in some remote places because we have such a hard uh, you know we, we have lots of mountains lots of remote places we cannot access easier easily uh, sometimes you you have regions in the country where you have to take a boat and that's the only road you can get to, you know basically mostly in the pacific coast so sometimes people just send the songs they, through whatsapp through facebook it's it's Pretty, pretty interesting what happens. So DSPs have a lot to do over here. And yeah, like Laura said, I would say, I would say it's Spotify, YouTube on top, then Spotify, perhaps maybe Deezer, Claro Music, and, and they all share a little bit of, of, of what's coming next. But those are the main. So I already have three follow-up questions um, that I'm trying to remember here. Um, so first of all, uh, Juan, you said that um, that you know Colombians are listening to a lot of new music. Are there any specific sounds that might you know that you see resonate particularly well in Colombia from you know like export music? Or, uh, I would say um, non-local music. I think we're pretty open to electronic music and to pop music of course and and rock perhaps with with hip-hop really close i mean colombia but but they all struggle with the local rhythms you know colombia produces a lot of music and there's a lot of people coming here in the recent years to do their albums to record their singles we we have become like an exporter of music production and songwriting in Latin America, but from other places of the world, and particularly Medellin, the city I'm in, has become 
pretty famous by doing a lot of reggaeton and urban music, which I don't know if you're familiar, but we have like massive superstars uh, that are from Colombia and that are doing and recording reggaeton music and that music is being heard all over the world. So, so yeah, it, it's, it, I think we're pretty open uh, to a lot of genres, but, but there's a lot of local production as well. Yeah, that's something you need to take into account, if I may compliment what Juan is saying. Uh, I don't know if you remember the phenomena of Mexico, where each artist that you picked, no, no matter what artist, what genre, you always pick and you saw Mexico there as an audience. Colombia is doing that catching up, uh, bringing new audiences to new music. However, when you're coming to our country and you want people to listen to your music, you have to take into account where exactly in Colombia are you going to position your music? Because as Juan says, we have a very strong local uh, production and amount of artists that are going around, but it depends on the area that you're focusing on. Uh, we're going to listen to a certain type of music. Uh, the five regions, the five musical regions of Colombia, for example, kind of give you the trend of what people listen. For example, in Bogota, you're going to be uh, listening to many, many things because Bogota is the center of, uh, of the country and it has, let's say, uh, people from all over the place. So in Bogota, you can listen to a lot of music. You can listen to rock, you can listen to alternative music, you can listen to hip hop, rap. There's a very strong rap uh, collective in Bogota going on, for example, but not that so in um, other regions such as, I don't know, the Caribbean region. The Caribbean region is going to be a little bit more influenced of tropical rhythms, of African American rhythms, for example. And it's gonna be different if you go to uh, Los Llanos Orientales, which are the plains in the east of the country. Uh, there you're going to have another influence. So probably if you're going to think of coming to Colombia, you're, you're going to have to think where exactly do you want to uh, work with music? As Juan says, Medellin, for example, is a center for urban music production. So probably people are going to go more for urban and hip hop and rap and trap rather than uh, other rhythms. So uh, this is something you need to take into account. Mm -hmm. And um, would you say that there are opportunities for, um, you know, artists from, for European artists um, to get um, playlisted, for example, on, you know, Colombian playlists? Um, are you actually How, how's the relationship between you and your teams, you know, in Europe? Are you actually working together? Maybe sometimes even discussing promising uprising artists from, from outside of your area? Definitely. Definitely, yes. For example, uh, in Believe, we have a global, uh, what we call, editorial and marketing partnership department. And this global department is bringing artists from all over the world Uh, to the different regions. And we have done actions in particularly in Colombia for artists from Germany, artists from France, artists from uh, Holland, for example, uh, that could be relevant. And what we see if they're relevant is for example, what I told you, where can they really be uh, interesting to listen to? So we pitch the music, we do exactly the same thing that we do with local artists and Uh, when we see that it's something that is universal, I mean, music speaks for itself. So when the music is universal, you can just go ahead and pitch and the editors are going to like it because our, for example, our uh, New Music Friday Colombia playlist has everything going on. It has urban, it has pop, it has rock, it has alternative, it has vallenato, it has um, popular music. And of course, it has music in other languages, English especially. I would say, but um, but yes, we can uh, achieve playlisting for artists. Look, for example, Petit Biscuit in France was one of our artists that was uh, has been playlisted a couple of times already in Colombia. I would say you need to you need to first create a strategy and try to develop an audience here. You know, it, it's it's not going to happen right away. You need to show your distributor and also the local curators that you have some traction in the territory. So what uh, Yona is saying, I hope I pronounce it well, I don't, he, he was saying he was making some advertising uh, on YouTube. That would be really good 
before you try to pitch a song for a playlist for a Colombian playlist is, hey, I'm working with Colombian artists. I'm doing advertising campaigns for Colombian people. I already have these numbers. I already have this many interactions. So it's opening a new market, really. I, I think we're past the point where pretty much anyone could just explode only digitally and, and just because the, the, the platforms were new, Spotify was trying to open the markets and as well as other DSPs, that moment has passed. And now you need to show that you're really interested in that territory, that you are doing efforts, spending some money, working with local artists, and that you have a specific focus on creating on, on creating an audience there. Like that, that's the current moment. And not only for you, for every independent artist in the world, Colombian curators and the curators for Mexico or for Brazil, they have lots of music coming to their ears and with actually people that have already local numbers and they are well known the, the competition for being playlisted is is big and there are more criteria uh, in place to choose what gets playlisted or not it, that doesn't mean you don't get a chance but it means that you need to really have a plan you know so so Try to focus on on creating all those strategies before you try to pitch a song. And if you, of course, this is something that I mention every day. If you don't get playlisted, it's not the end of the world, man. You need to think about the next single. You need to think about uh, a longer strategy. And, and I hope it's not the case for you, but I'm just putting it out there because I always get that question. I don't know where you are in that in that area, but just to mention it. And have you? Maybe, I don't know if this is a difficult question, but have you seen um, any, you know, inspiring examples of artists doing something specific for the Colombian market? Um, so obviously artists from, from outside of Colombia. If something springs to mind, otherwise um, it's fine as well. Yeah, I, 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 sorry, Juan, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I just, I was just going to mention about the things that I just, that I just said, you know, like, uh, go... Instagram campaigns, YouTube, Google, and Google Ads uh, targeted for the specific country, uh, featuring artists. You know, the the whole the good thing is that we are in a global arena, and you can pretty much go into Noeas Viernes, which is the local playlist. Go into Instagram and see the local charts, and I can share. We could share a few of the of the local, also re independent radio stations that you might. Yeah, that would be great. Listen, so you can start, you know, hearing, hey, these guys are doing something similar. Let's work together. Let's reach out. That would be my take on that. Yeah. What What are the, the local tastemakers that would be interesting for Ruby? Can I would you... say there's a local, like, I don't want to, no, it's like a local national radio. I was going to say our NPR, but I, I don't want to say that. But we have a local government radio station that it's always presenting new artists is called Radionica is not only local artists but global artists so that's somewhere you can start I'm gonna paste their link in here it's gonna be in Spanish but it's not gonna be hard to figure out that's yeah, the first one that comes plays a lot of indie music rock for example alternative uh their di director that is called El Profe like the teacher <laughs> uh he's a person that is always eager to listen to new music and to promote new music and try to help um, artists from around the world to generate audiences in Colombia. So that's very important. Cool. And um, so in terms of, I mean, zooming out a little bit of Colombia, maybe looking at, you know, Latin America more, more broadly, um, how does, how's the kind of like programming landscape looking like? Do you have editors in every country? or do you are they mainly sitting in places like Colombia Mexico Brazil and and are then looking after other territories as well or do you actually have to have a quite broad network um, across well across Latin America we need to have a broad network because we have obviously let's say the U.S. Latin market that is a bit different of the rest of the Latin market uh, we have editors for most of the platforms or the DSPs based in Miami or LA, for example, that work with the US Latin, um, let's say portion of the, of the market. Uh, but these are totally independent from the Latin American editors, which are based usually in Mexico, uh, in Bogota, and Buenos Aires and Santiago, more or less are the, the, <clears throat> the places where editors are based. 
So when you want to, <clears throat> to come to Colombia, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I got <laughs> a sore throat. Uh, when you come to Colombia, you might want to contact editors from the Andean region that are based in Bogota for most of the DSPs, for Spotify, for Deezer, for Amazon Music, for example, the uh, editors are going to be based here in Bogota. And then um, if you want to go to uh, Southern Cone, you might want to contact teams in Argentina and Buenos Aires where the uh, local editors are. Yeah, consider that Latin America is a really, really big uh, piece of land. And we all do speak Spanish, except Brazil, but it's very different one country from the next. And it's, uh, it's kind of expensive to travel from Mexico to Argentina. So it's not as Europe that you have everything and you can take a train and you can take a plane or whatever, drive. Here it's massive so we speak the same language but it's uh, we have a lot of territory to cover and as Laura explained like there's different countries that you're going to have to reach out if you're trying to focus on editorial uh, playlisting now uh, Brazil is a monster like a separate monster like they speak Portuguese they have a lot of their own production and Brazilians listen to their own music it's a hard market even for us in Latin America to penetrate. You know, Brazilians are apart. Now, when you do Mexico, you go Colombia, you go Argentina, it's a little more, it's more similar, but they're still, uh, we're still far away from each other. So it, it needs uh, to have separate teams and DSPs have placed separate editors for those markets. So that's something you might wanna consider when trying to open these new markets. Do you have any sort of local showcases, you know, that artists can apply for um, in terms of showing themselves to the industry and trying to kind of get a first um, foot in the market? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There are there are a lot of uh, musical markets going on. Uh, the mo two most important musical markets where there are chances to get your uh, music showcased or even participate in some of the speed meetings that are organized are BOM. Bogota Music Market and Circular in Medellin, for example. That's uh, a place where you can get your music showcased. Nice. Yeah, and still, uh, there's a lot of initiatives to open up new independent markets. You you send your music. It, it's mostly focused, or I, I think it's focused, uh, I don't know, Laura, if you would agree, but it's mostly focused on live music. So it's basically people trying to sell their gigs and sell their show to promoters of festivals uh, pretty much anywhere in the world we, we have like really people from each part of the world come and to circular or come to Bogota Music Market and watch Latin America uh, artists perform so you could apply to those festivals and say hey I want to go there you're probably going to have to mm, you know uh, pay for your own plane tickets or try to set up a tour you, you need a strategy when you try to go to those independent markets, you know, because uh, if you're going to come all the way to Medellin to play in Circular, you might as well try to set up a tour, try to do a lot of press, try to make it like a promotional trip. Um, but definitely you're going to run into people from all over the world that are, that are you know, hiring independent acts and, and make a lot of connections. That's, that's for sure. Um. And you've mentioned, so, I mean, obviously here we have services like Spotify, Deezer, Amazon Music, but we don't have Clara Musica here. Is there anything we need to know in terms of how to use the service um, to its fullest potential? Do they have any on-platform marketing tools, um, like, you know, an artist profile that we would need to, to update or something like that? Any, any features we need to be aware of? Mm. <laughs> it's kind of the, of the exact same uh, thing that you do with your usual profile in any uh, in any DSP. I think um, what is important is that if you are targeting your audience in uh, a territory like Colombia, you should start playing with your um, own playlist and try to 
show people that you're interested in that uh, territory, in that country, for example. Uh, I'm coming soon to uh, Bogota Music Market. Uh, these are my favorite uh, to the moment Colombian artists and make a playlist in your profile. So that is going to show people and that's going to move the algorithms to show people that you're interested in that specific country. I think uh, the most important thing is something that Juan said that you need to come with a very specific strategy, a very specific marketing strategy to start working the market. Uh, for example, Petit Biscuit, you were asking Marlene a couple of minutes ago, if we had a case that was uh, successful with something like this, and I was mentioning the case of Petit Biscuit. Uh, he, for example, designed a specific marketing plan that included Colombia with um, talking to radio people, for example, uh, to Radionica, to La, La X, which is one of the Anglo or English speaking um, radio stations in Colombia. We have Alejandro Marin, that is called the music pimp. He's kind of our uh, music uh, journalist uh, and opinion generator. And he is also very eager to interview new artists, et cetera. Um, so, but it is, we had this strategy of contacting him, talking to him, showing his music. Then he also had uh, a very strong um, profile targeting in the DSPs where he showed that there were uh, specific actions for Colombian fans and Colombian audience. And uh, this helped, uh, for example, for him to get playlisted. And then through the playlist, he started contacting his Colombian audience, sending like video IDs, uh, saying hi to the Colombian specific market. That was very interesting because something that doesn't happen that much is the interaction, the engagement between the audiences of international artists and the local audience. Uh, people are more used to interact with the local acts rather than having an international artist saying, hey, people from Colombia. When they do that, it's kind of a magical effect, you know? So uh, I think these are the actions that could be interesting more than actually having uh, tools or things that you have in your DSP profile, which are going to be the usual tools that you're going to use being your country or other countries. Yeah, I think sadly, that platform, even though it's very popular, ha hasn't been as open to working with new acts as has been as Spotify has been. You know, the, I think that's been the success. You know, Spotify has has been the tool for independent artists to create new audiences, and they have highlighted new artists to bring their people to the platform. So, so that focus, I think, for now, I think it's only Spotify specific. I, I don't see any other local platforms trying to do that we had Deezer, like laura mentioned before but it, it's not in the it's not as active as it used to be i think right now so so yeah i, I would i would add that to a question it's we need more attention from dsps to independent artists for sure uh carolina uh, i don't know if you're still raising your hand sorry i just saw it now <laughs> okay I wanted to ask one question because we're talking a lot about you know ids and marketing tools and so on and so forth and uh, what's the role of language there, for example, to Laura and Juan? Because when you're talking about advertising and IDs, how relevant is it that things need to be translated to Spanish? Because that, you know, that's also like a barrier. How do you come as a Nordic person and trying to communicate uh, closely and, and personally to an audience uh, as Colombians, as we are very, you know, personal and emotional people? But can is it important to make sure that you're always translating everything to Spanish? Not necessarily. I don't think it's uh, that necessarily because the audience that is going to listen to your music, it's going to, it, it's going to listen to your music in English or in other languages. And it, the music is going to speak uh, for itself. So I don't think it's going to be that necessary. English is a very uh, broad language here in Colombia. Many people around the, the country speak English or understand at least that probably they don't speak. But uh, as we say here, we listen. <laughs> we don't speak, but we listen and we understand. So uh, it's not going to be a barrier. However, people really appreciate the effort of the artist trying to say at least, hola, amigos. Uh, I am, I don't know if you ever heard Justin Bieber saying hi to Colombia. So you say, hola, amigos, and that was it. And then he went on in English. But the hola, amigos just kind of uh, 
kickstarts the heart of the fans and oh he's trying oh so cute <laughs> and that's going to happen so efforts are appreciated by the fans yeah I, I would agree and i think for example the the person laura mentioned alejandro marin the music pimp uh, he runs a music station that only plays music in english and that's that's the focus so that's a window you have you know and, and people are open and we have such an influence from the united states uh, that english is becoming very popular and people at least can do a basic conversation you can get you, you can you know plan a gig and there's they're going to be there's going to be a lot of promoters that are going to be able to to hire you and do business with you that's that's going to be that's sure um, apart from the kind of language question, is there any anything else that we need to kind of understand um, in terms of local preferences of marketing to audiences? You know, is there anything that you see working particularly well, um, certain platforms, certain types of ads, uh, whatever it may be, um, or things that don't work so well? I think we are... Uh in terms of marketing, uh, we are a very aspirational uh, market. We want things that usually we can't have. And for example, one of the things I always uh, tell my, uh, let's say, clients and marketing students uh, from the music business is that you need to focus on how to reach uh, the four different variables that you need to work on music marketing. The first variable being audience, obviously, you need to start targeting the audience. The IVs work very well, uh, showing people that you understand the country, that you know about the country, that it's not like, oh, that country, Colombia, what is Colombia? But rather than, uh, the, uh, this is a picture I took in my last trip to Colombia. Hey, people, I just, I'm very eager to see you next time. Something like that is works a lot. You need to work, for example, in engagement. And here people really move to have something, as I say, aspirational. For example, if you make a contest and you're going to say, I'm going to send a very special guitar kit with a pick and a, I don't know, whatever. It can be simple things to my most engaged fan in Colombia. People are going to go there and they're going to work for the prize and they're going to start engaging with you. And that's a good thing to do. Also, you're going to want to people to listen uh, to what you are offering for the market. For example, collaborations, that could be a very useful thing. Uh, try to find a, an artist in Colombia that you want to make a collaboration with. And, um, and we have a lot of rhythms that can like complement very well with other rhythms that come from uh, the Nordic countries or, or from Europe, for example. Uh, so uh, that could be a very interesting combination that could work in both ways. So um, getting that uh, collaboration and people trying to understand what you're doing and how you want to do it with uh, Colombia, that is an interesting thing to do. Yeah, I, I would say, I mean, I would take from what Laura said is, is, is try to create an emotional link with the people you're trying to reach, you know, and you can start by partnering with local bands. The reality is that we are pretty hit by by COVID, like live music is like trying to catch up, like venues are struggling, artists are struggling, are people left the music, people, it, it's a hard time over here. Um, as we are, a, you know, like a growing economy and COVID really made a mess for all artistic acts and live music, dance, theater, stuff like that. So we're pretty hit right now. But by partnering and coming back, because I'm thinking of this because Yona was asking about a, a venue or concert listing website that he could follow. We're lacking of that kind of structure, you know, like a venue ladder. I remember when I was in, in Austin in South by Southwest and someone made a conference about a music city and they specifically spoke about a venue ladder, like what would be the venue that you could play if you're an independent, if you're a mid -ar middle artist, if you're a huge artist, we're lacking that. We're, we're building that structure. For example, we just, people just announced um, someone 
the biggest music festival, like private music festival here is Stereo Picnic. And they this week they just announced the lineup. So I'm going to share that so you might check it out and you, and you understand a little bit of what's coming and what's playing here. But apart from that, I think trying to build a personal relationship with people. We like, we as Colombians, we are, we tend and we have a, a particular taste for partying, <laughs> socializing and joy, you know, and humor. Like pe people like to laugh. People like to share a drink with their folks. People like to watch a lot of soccer. People like to go out in the country and see sports with and have a beer with their friends. So people that can interpret and can make people laugh or at least have a take a smile that they are going to connect with the, the Colombian audience and they're going to be uh, well received. Um, and as part of strategies, I think we lack a lot of the tools. I remember seeing uh, Marlene and Anthony do a conference here in Medellin about a whole landscape of digital tools that you could use as an independent artist. Those are those how have not penetrated here as 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 hard, but uh, we're still you know trying to build those that that digital environment. I can share a tool that we have. However, it's called Foundy, and Foundy allows you to create an audience to do um, you know ads to create a, you know uh, landing pages ad campaigns. I'm going to share that here, and you can basically use that for your country or for Colombia. That's what I'd like to share about that with you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, also, another question. I mean, probably I know the answer already. Like TikTok is probably very, very popular in your uh, country as well, I assume. Um, or would you say that because of, you know, because YouTube is so huge that actually YouTube Shorts and or Instagram Reels, like are these platforms that you're starting to use to promote music in your country as well? And, um, you know, which one seems to be the, the most popular one for, for audiences in Colombia? Yeah, TikTok is huge. TikTok is uh, coming on as uh, one of the references for the DSPs to identify new music trends, for example. Uh, actually, uh, many of the DSPs are checking out what is going on with TikTok to uh, make editorial placements for artists. And uh, this is something we are communicating to our artists here. Be in TikTok, you must be in TikTok because this is a place to discover music. YouTube Shorts is not there yet. Uh, let's say people are kind of looking at them and understanding why they should be there and not in TikTok and understanding, uh, you know, why this is going to be bigger or smaller than TikTok. They are, they're trying to understand the environment. Um, Reels, uh, I think they're also not there yet because people usually try to uh, just copy paste their same TikTok videos on Reels. So it's kind of, you, you go to Reels and you see the same TikTok videos. So I think this is kind of an education process. We need to uh, focus on our artists uh, that they understand that each short video platform has a language, has a voice, has a different uh, way of doing things and that you need to generate content. That for example, if you're going to YouTube Shorts, you want to make content that is going to make people go and subscribe to your channel and go and watch things on your channel rather than using YouTube Shorts as we use TikTok uh, to discover music for Spotify, for example. That's uh, kind of the differences you need to take into account. But yes, short video is uh, coming fast and, uh, uh, and coming strong. And uh, do you see any, um again, particular sounds working really well on, on TikTok? Um, is it mostly local stuff? Is it mostly international? Pretty much yeah. anything. I can see <laughs> anything people people can dance to. <laughs> okay. that, that's, a, that's a pretty big window over there. Of course, a, we have some local rhythms and people creating content related to it. But, you know, any fun electronic music would also be played or yeah anything that can connect to particularly young audiences if you're talking about about tiktok right okay cool i think um i hope that there are some questions as well because i would like to open up the q a 
Um, I don't know if you, how you've done it yesterday, if people should just unmute themselves and ask the question directly, um, or obviously feel free to put them in the chat and we can ask um, them for you as well. So are there any questions from the audience? That's a no. pretty funny audience compared to yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Um, maybe we can talk a little bit more about the media landscape because that's something I asked some of the guys yesterday and it was very hard to get like a more kind of defined audience and I, uh, I'm so sorry. And now um, Lara and Juan, you know, you, you guys gave us some, some radio stations which, which was really nice. Is there anything uh, in terms of online or print that can actually make a difference? Like if I, if, you know, if I want to bring an artist to Colombia, where where do I find the right publicist and what would be their goals, so to speak? It, can you say it like that as, as one we would do with the US or the UK and Europe, where you can say, okay, send me an offer and tell me what it is possible. Would you know that some publicists, for example, in Mexico offer LATAM campaigns? Um, yeah, definitely. One thing that is important is that we do not have the publicist per se that uh, you, as you know it in the US, for example, uh, we have what we call the press manager. Uh, the press manager basically does the publicist job, but is more focused on um, media promotion uh, rather than other things like events, et cetera, PR. Uh, here, we kind of do everything because this is how we, we are taught in Colombia. We, we want to do everything and we understand about everything. So it's a very resourceful market. So we have the press managers. We have very, very interesting press managers specialized in music that they have worked in music all their lives. These are people that were uh, probably in majors working with the majors, uh, doing all the press releases, all the press conferences, the marketing plans, the promo tours, et cetera. So there are people that are very specific in music. We have, for example, uh, Diana Cuitos from oh, Cuitos, uh, but that's from Cuitos Entertainment. She has a whole office of communication. Luz Ariana Ramos uh, from Ramos uh, Communications. We have Mayer Lisandoval, we have a, a very famous uh, promoter here that is very specialized on TV, for example, which is Fernando Rojas. Fernando is known all throughout the channels and he's very good on TV. So if you want to come to Colombia and you want to have like the whole set of things, you need to start thinking about having a media tour that includes radio for the specific radio that you're going to uh, try to attack for uh, the type of music that we, are thinking about. Uh, we already mentioned Ionica and La X. That's more or less it. Obviously, there are online um, radio stations that play all kinds of music, which are also very good to start generating audience. So you might want to do a list of those online radio stations that could help you. You might want to tack a little bit of written press. Uh, El Tiempo, for example, they have a very interesting uh, journalist there, Liliana. Uh, that uh, she is specialized in music and she uh, talks about music a lot. So you can try to uh, land an interview with Liliana in El Tiempo, El Espectador. We have Shock Magazine, uh, which is online uh, right now, but uh, it's a special, it's a Rolling Stone magazine uh, here in Colombia, for example. So you might want to have the uh, print uh, press uh, promotor. And obviously you might want to have also a little bit of TV going on. Yeah, here people watch a lot of TV. So if you want to go to the, to the morning show, it's gonna depend also on what you want, but you can go to the morning shows or you can ask for a little capsule at the end of the uh, news uh, that has an entertainment section to mention that you're visiting and they're going to give you a small interview and, and say, hey, this artist is visiting us from uh, Denmark, for example. And people say, oh, wow, look at that. And it's a, a small capsule, but it's very, very useful. And with that, you might want to also include a little bit of a tour, uh, depending on who are you, who is distributing your music, if you have a record label or you're distributing through a, a platform like CD Baby or Believe or, or whatever, you might want to um, organize a bit of a tour 
uh, through the DSPs or make a session, a special session for the DSPs where you can showcase your music. And that could be done uh, jointly with your uh, distributor, for example. So these are kinds of the uh, variables you might want to check out if you're coming to Colombia. Those sessions that you talk about, is that something you can do online? Like for example, if, you know, let's say I'm in the role of a manager and I have this Danish artist, could we do like a, a session from here that we could deliver to them? Yeah, we can, we can, we can, I mean, uh, nowadays we have a lot of flexibility <laughs> and that, that's one of the good things about pandemic. It's not like you necessarily have to be here. We can have, for example, uh, with Claro Musica, we have a lot of Facebook lives during pandemic. Uh, and we, we never had the artists like in special plays. They were in their hometowns or whatever. And we uh, made activities uh, with the platform, for example. So we can explore the possibility of starting there and then coming here, or we can explore the possibility of having a small showcase for DSPs and, uh, and people right here in a small venue, for example. There are many things that, that we can do, but obviously uh, what is important is you need to have a plan. Yeah, and one last thing. Um, if we're gonna get like, down and dirty to what it actually costs because obviously there's a big you know purchasing power difference between the nordics and colombia right uh like some euros let's put it like that now because in the nordics the different countries have different currencies but from euros to pesos is like a very big difference what are you what do you think a campaign like that like a publicist campaign that, we, that is going to do or a pr manager uh radio tv El tiempo, el, el espectador, semana, and some of the basic online. I said, what, what kind of price range do you think we're looking at? And I know that it's really difficult for you to say, but let's say a three-month campaign. Um, what, what do you think that would be in like dollars? Just because I want to get a sense, I want the Nordics to get a sense of how difficult or easy it is to actually invest. It could be around, uh, let's say, it's gonna depend obviously, but if you're going to make a, a three month campaign, it's gonna cost you around um, $2,000, uh, $2,500 uh, dollars per month. So times three, <laughs> you have to multiply it times three. It's going to depend on who is going to make you, uh, the promotion because as I tell you, uh, there is very small people that don't charge that much, but they don't have the, uh, bandwidth to promote in a very strong way or you have the big ones that can promote uh very effectively but they're going to cost uh money so that's around the two thousand uh twenty five hundred uh dollars per month that I, i'm telling you i don't know Juan, if you have any other price like going on yeah i would say i would say it's around that i think you can get, find maybe cheaper options to begin with and 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 we're talking this is, you know, like the offline strategy, which I think it should come after you uh, do all the digital uh, or use the digital tools to try to get something going here or, or at least give it a try or and see if you're getting any traction, you know you're very far away. It's a long flight. You're going to get a lot of jet lag, right? So use all the digital tools first see if you're getting traction and if you are you might want to invest in one of these big policies it also depends on genres you know there's some people that are only focused on uh urban music there's a for example there's a lot uh, it depends on what you work with if you're uh, doing metal or rock there's a strong metal community in colombia in all latin america which could be uh your advantage and, and it could be way much easier than a market to penetrate if you're doing working on that genres so yeah that would be my advice first use all the digital tools and then if you're getting anything come here and do uh, the publicists do the gigs do all the music markets that would be my way to to get into the market that is all this um, I have another question because we, we were talking about, um, yeah, blogs and, um, you know, like important outlets. Do you have any local influential YouTube channels that kind of do stuff with music? So, you know, like influential people that have a channel that review new music or that 
do music performances, like the things like something like Colors or, uh, you know, Tiny Disc, like that sort of thing, but like in a local, kind of local version? Yeah, I can think of three people that are reviewing or, make, or generating a discussion around music. Uh, one of them is Albinch. I'm going to paste the links later. The other one is Jose M. Uh, and the third one would be El Enemigo, which is our, which are three young folks that are talking about what's happening in the music industry, reviewing new albums. I'm going to paste the links. I don't know, Laura, if you can suggest anyone else, but those are the top three that come to mind at the moment. Yeah, El Enemigo is one of my favorites, actually. Uh, he, he has a very uh, wide um, spectrum of what he reviews and what he talks about. So I like that a lot because he is, he's not focused on, on something particular. Uh, there are also the podcast people that are talking about music. And for example, um, the Music Pimp that has the, the Music Pimp is kind of the place to go because <laughs> he has the radio station and he has a blog. And he has a podcast, so he has the whole thing going on. But we have, for example, Alberto Marchena also talking about music. And we have uh, Fernando Palma, people that were radio personalities that now have podcasts, for example. So uh, that's another uh, opportunity of being showcased. Thank you. I think there's, um, Yona, you raised your hand, so go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to ask about labels because um all this is very exciting hearing about the preferred genres in colombia of course i have some like first-hand experience about what kind of music is uh, being listened to in colombia because i run a lot of ad campaigns there so i've seen that my music is being well received but do you have any kind of label recommendations for for an artist like me who likes to combine electronic music and pop music and rock music. It's kind of a mixture of all of those genres. So any label tips? Well, Colombia is um, it's a difficult country for labels. <laughs> we are, uh, let's say the, the big labels are usually the uh, three majors. And uh, there are a couple of uh, indie labels but that are focused a lot on uh, local music, Codiscos, Fuentes, FM Entretenimiento. These are labels that are uh, basically with tropical Colombian music and um, they are not investing that much in new music. But we have a rising uh, movement of indie labels that are starting to work. Uh, for example, you might know very well M3, uh, which is uh, the label that started Bombas Serio and that started Messi Periné and and they do interesting things um, and I think that's kind of the biggest indie label that you can find here in Colombia. Metodes is a, a very interesting option, and as I tell you, there are many more that are upcoming, uh, but they're starting. They're not in the let's say uh, in, in a big uh, infrastructure. They're starting and uh, they're doing things well, but they're very small still so i think uh we need to be a more mature market for labels one i don't know if you agree with me yeah yeah that's something we're lacking here and it's starting to 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 happen perhaps i don't know if you might see an opportunity if you're all artists or if you're in music industry interested people as well we need those sort of structures we need those connections we need powerhouses that can develop more artists and and that's something that's beginning to happen i share with laura i also share a share here a poland records which is they work with m3 to create all these artists uh, particularly bomba stereo in their beginnings chalk it down people that are you know mixing colombia music with rock with electronic take a look uh, um but yeah it's it's not something that that it's it's huge here. We don't have a pool of labels that I can show you. We don't have a directory. That happens as well with publishing companies, but I think it's starting. And I want to say it's starting also because us distributors are sharing this information, helping people create these labels and working with 
folks that are beginning to understand what it is about because it's it's not entirely clear what a label does, why it's relevant, how can it make money. So that's something we are beginning to to spread and hopefully it's a seed that's going to grow in, in the next couple of years. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm very much an entrepreneur myself, so it's kind of, I would kind of like to find partners in that kind of sense. Not necessarily get signed, but more like do collabs of sorts. That's an opportunity for sure. Okay, thank you. Any, any other questions here? Well, um, Juan, you mentioned that uh, you have like a lot of, or a couple of really big global artists actually coming from Colombia. Um, do you have any kind of insights into how they, you know, started their career? Um, like any sort of strategies that um, are good to know about? Or is it basically what you already said about like collaborations? and? Um, no, I think it's, it's sweat and tears and blood. <laughs> you know, I, because, for example, I remember a story. There's a guy that's huge right now. It's Jay Balvin. I don't know if he's made the Super Bowl. He's made a lot of music. And there's a story about him that at the beginning, well, he was truly a, like a reggaeton pioneer. Like when no one was listening to that, he was trying to make it in the, in the reggaeton. And he helped globalize the genre. But at the beginning there's a story that said that he did 200 free gigs for one of the major media networks here so they would just put in in every little village every middle city every short city in a in a in a stage you know so he was like i'm gonna give you 200 shows and you're gonna put me in all of your activation events and your your promotion events so imagine that playing 200 free gigs, <laughs> training all over the country, just to position his name and basically to position the brand. If you're trying to make it in the music industry, you, you want to create a brand. You want to be clear about what your brand means, about what your values are, and try to communicate that as efficiently as possible. And I think that's part of the, of the you know, of the challenge, make your name and put your name out there, make people remember it well. So so I, I that's one of the things that comes to mind. And apart from that, you know, when you talk about Shakira, for example, Shakira, the hips don't lie girl, she, she you know, really, <laughs> it was truly really like, like, like an amazing marriage between her and Luis Fernando Choa. We, he's an amazing songwriter and he was working for for advertising she wanted to make it into a pop business into a pop music so she found someone who was making music for ads for television for radio and that's this that's where the first album came out it was this girl making amazing lyrics putting a really particular um weight to sing with an amazing musician, an amazing guitar player who used to write super catchy tunes. So it's it, it made sense. It would you just needed a little bit of of luck and promotion to make it happen. So those are the beginnings of those two artists. I don't know, Laura, if you have any stories about the rest, or you want to talk about something else, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to mute because there was that kind of a drill there going on, but no, it's basically what uh, Juan was mentioning. Yeah. Carolina, any more questions from you? No, I think, uh, I think I'm good. And we're actually uh, right on time as well. We needed to have a little 45 minute break before the next session. So I think it's a great time to close. Uh, the next session is publishing in sync. And then we have M3, who the guys were very kindly speaking about and then Diego Maldonado from one RPM, but uh, Lara and Juan, thank you so, so much. And thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Uh, for taking the time of your busy morning to, to spend a little bit of, uh, give us some wisdom here in the Nordic. So thank you guys so much. <laughs>